welcome to episode six of Drive and Deliver with me, Atlanta Delivers. This is my podcast where I talk about all things delivering. If you don't know me, my name's Atlanta and I'm a delivery driver for Deliveroo, Uber Eats, Just Eat, Be Livery, Go Fear and then also recently I've been doing a bit of every as well. So I, I know a lot of platforms. I've been a delivery driver for coming up five years in the summer now, which is absolutely crazy. A year of that I spent riding on e-bikes and the rest has been in the car, which is what I'm back in now. It was like last year into this year. No, we're in 2024. 2022 and 2023 over the summer, um, but for a year straight actually, that I was on the bikes. If you enjoy the video, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. I'm at 10,000 subscribers now, which is absolutely incredible. So let's smash it to the next to 20,000 subscribers. So hit that subscribe button. I also have a Facebook delivery group, which is linked down below, which you guys can get involved with the podcast. And we try to keep the group as friendly as possible. So yeah, come and join if you want friendly advice and stuff to do with delivering. And last thing before we get started, you can become a member on this channel, top line of the description. You can view my videos 24 hours early. I upload every Sunday at 10 a.m. a delivery video and then a podcast episode every other Wednesday at 6 p.m. So you can view that 24 hours early. So to get started, let's start with some news updates. And the biggest thing at the moment is to do with the delivery strikes. So I am filming this on the 15th of February. Yesterday was Valentine's Day, 14th of February. And that's when a strike happened. Now let's get a bit more into this, I suppose. There's been a lot of controversy on my social media because I personally did work the strike. So on Rodeo, the app where you can see how much you've earned and statistics and stuff, it showed that last year, Valentine's was on a Tuesday, a Wednesday this year. And last year, it was the busiest Tuesday of the year by 25% extra in orders. So it's a very busy day of the year and delivering is my full-time job. So I did decide to work. I don't disagree with the pay needs to go up because like over the years the pay's gone down and I do agree that it needs to go up but personally I did work and I know a lot of other people did work as well. Worthing where I live was not like a registered area of where the strikes was going on so I think pretty much all the drivers were working here. There was no one out striking or anything. I saw a lot of riders had no issues really and I delivered for 10 hours yesterday, did £200, £20 an hour. I can't really complain with that. There was videos, I joined a WhatsApp group that was like a Brighton strike group because I just wanted to see out of interest what was going on, where they're going and so on. So I joined that and then there was photos and videos all evening of what was going on. They had a route that they were going around Brighton, um, all the scooter riders protesting or um, striking I suppose is the right term. And yeah, I would not be going near Brighton. If like Worthing was an area where the drives were striking, I wouldn't have bothered to deliver because um, some riders have in previous strikes, there was one only like maybe three weeks ago now, other riders did get hurt that tried to deliver, which isn't right because it's not a registered strike. You're striking against yourself. We're self-employed. There's no nothing in place for it to be an actual strike. It's just agreed between the riders. Let me know in the comments how that the delivery companies can actually make this work because our pay needs to increase, yes. Where's this gonna come from? Do they increase the service charge and delivery fee for customers? That's not gonna be good for customers. Customers are not gonna like that and probably will order less. So I'm not sure that's any help. Are the companies gonna pay us more and make less profit? Unlikely that they would do that either. So. What's the solution? Will the government pay something? I don't think so either. Why would they do that when we're self-employed? Um, another option I was reading yesterday is someone said that they'll just make us, well, not make us, but you can become employed, you're gonna be paid hourly, and then that's gonna be no help that you're gonna have to do all these orders. And at the minute, it's such a benefit being self-employed that we can work when we want and where we want. And for me personally, it works so well, and I know it does for many others as well. So what is the solution of this? 
the next news update I saw was about co-op on Uber Eats, which was quite interesting. I need to remember when I order myself as well this, that co-op and Uber Eats are, well, you can order from co-op on Uber Eats, but now co-op is the first UK supermarket that you can get members prices. So when you go to check out, you'll be able to put in your co-op membership number and that will mean you get the discounted prices like you get in store which I think is definitely a good thing and I would choose to order from there being able to do that. It's definitely good marking for Uber Eats because more people are gonna order from co-op on Uber. It's gonna probably decrease it for Deliveroo and Just Eat. And yeah, I, I can't see any negatives of that at all. The next news update I'm actually going to read is because I was like, searching the news and there was a picture of me that came up on the article even though I have nothing relevant to do with the article but it was to do with a company called Delivery Hero who is a Berlin based food delivery company. They exited their stakes in Deliveroo as a commitment to disciplined capital allocation. I'm not 100% sure what that means I'm afraid. <laughs> But Delivery Hero successfully placed approximately 68 million shares in Deliveroo at a price of £1.13 per share. Their, their share represents 4.5% of Deliveroo's total outstanding shares. So that is a big amount into Deliveroo. It made me think, I was like, should I be buying into Deliveroo? Like, is that a silly idea? I'm not sure it is. And the last news update that I read was to do with Justy extending their sponsorship partnership with UEFA, I wanted to get that right, the football, um, until 2027. So with UEFA Champions League, Europa League and Europa Conference League. So that's good. That carries on um, just the advertising on that, which is obviously a big thing. So yeah, that's good. Obviously it must be working for Just Eat to do that and continue it. The next segment of the podcast, I'm going to talk about new things that I've seen delivering within the last couple of weeks. I like this segment. So when I'm out delivering or I see things online, I have like a notes page in my phone where if something new has happened, I write it down. Otherwise I will forget. I have to write everything down in my notes. But I have a list of new things that have happened in the last couple of weeks. So one new thing that I still can't believe, I've had this in a couple of episodes where a company has joined like Delivery Just Eat Uber and I've always thought they've been on them, which they haven't. So I, I'm i still not 100% sure on this one, but I have checked it. I've had an email and I've seen it on Facebook and in the news that Deliveroo has now joined Taco Bell. But I still can't believe, has that not been a thing? Like, has that really not been a thing? Because I can't believe that. More specific to my own area, there is a new screw fix. So I now have two screw fix in Worthing, which is a bit random. Recently, as I said, I've been doing a lot more go food deliveries. I did one even yesterday for screw fix from the other one. I haven't been to the new one yet, but it popped up on my app on go food saying, you've got a new screw fix in your area. And I was like, what? And then I Googled it and we do. It's in West Worthing um, near Durrington. So that's good that I've got two now. On the kind of same note as that, Trade Cart has now joined Uber Eats. So I'm gonna read you the places this includes that we will deliver from. It does seem like Uber Eats is now copying Deliveroo because Deliveroo announced not too long ago that they will be starting with other companies that they're delivering for and Summers is one of them that they started on, like shoes, um, medicine, all these different things to get away from food a bit. And now Uber Eats has introduced it as well. So let me read you the companies. So. It says, on Uber Direct with over 100 trade merchant outlets across London with a current average delivery time of 52 minutes. That is cool, isn't it? That you can get delivered stuff so quickly. Like when I delivered the screw fix yesterday, it's guaranteed within an hour. I do think that's very cool. This is now being extended to London, Manchester, Liverpool and the Northwest region. The trade car services include City Plumbing, Hughes Grey, Dulex Decorator Centres, MP Morans, Lawson's, Paintwell and London Decorators Merchants. So that's quite a lot of places. That is very cool though and it's great for delivery drivers obviously that we've got more and more places to pick up from and increase our chance of work. So I, well, I don't think it's down here yet but is being trialled, I guess, in those places or just permanently there and then will be introduced to other places soon. So I think that's very positive. Another thing, right, I'll tell you a little story and something new that 
I don't know if it's even new, but I never knew about. So the other day I went to do an Uber Eats order for Asda. It was quite good pay. It was like 11 pounds for six, seven miles. I can't remember exactly. It was okay anyway. And Asda normally it was somewhere that I avoid one of them, but it seemed like worth me doing. So I turned up and went into Asda and they were like, oh, the customer's cancelled, so I've got to get rid of it. And I'm like, okay, great. Not to them. I was like, I've, like, I'd driven five or six miles to Asda for nothing because I can't get paid. I was like, that's so frustrating. So I went to contact Uber because I thought, I'm just going to try and contact Uber. There's a live chat when you're on an order. I never knew that. So I like, and they responded pretty quickly that I was talking to someone from Uber on a chat. Although it was absolutely no help. They were like, sorry, we can't do anything. We can't give you any money towards you driving there on like the circumstances, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, cool. But I never knew that was a thing. The next one is an email that I got from um, Deliveroo to do with the Deliveroo Union. Now this is quite relevant because of the strikes in place. It seems like you can now join a union for delivery. Let me find the email so I can read you a bit of it. So it says, hello Atlanta, GMB Union has a trade union agreement with Deliveroo, which means we represent all Deliveroo riders. You have a union to fight for the issues that matter to you, like pay, restaurant wait time and Deliveroo's approach to deactivations. Um, and then it says we're meeting company management regularly and have made progress and then things they've made progress with to launch new and better free online learning opportunities and training courses, raise the issue of restaurant wait times, and this has led to the launch of new changes in the app, such as rider check-in, new rider partnerships, offering access to discount and perks at places like Bike, Stop, Quick Fit, and Cafe Neuro. If you are a delivery rider, I went to Pizza Express a couple of nights ago, and we get 25% off the whole bill. I've used that for like years now but in case you don't know you just say you're a delivery rider show your app and then you get 25 percent off the whole bill and then it says and in april we'll be discussing rider pay as part of annual collective bargaining talks delivery has a minimum pay guarantee in place and we'll be discussing this with management now i spoke about this in another episode when i was talking about rodeo that they have this in place that we have a minimum wage guarantee but this isn't like hourly this is if you were on an order at the whole like a whole hour straight then you'd be guaranteed minimum pay so it still doesn't help if you don't have an order you only do one order in an hour you still might only be getting three pound in an hour so it's a bit like cheeky that statement i'd say but also that could be a lie actually because say you accept an order for five pounds even and you wait at the restaurant for ages and you are on an order, you could still do less than minimum wage. So that's not true, is it? Another thing that has happened is McDonald's breakfast wraps are back. Woo! Um, I delivered the second day that they started again. I didn't even realise until I started doing McDonald's order and it came up and I was like, oh yeah. So um, they've been very busy with breakfast wraps. They did actually, after that second day, they sold out for the next few days out of egg because so many people were ordering that they, they ran out of egg. So they had to stop breakfast wraps for a few days. I did actually have one myself yesterday. And it was really good. I love the breakfast wrap, but I don't have egg in it. But, oh, I could eat one right now. It's so good. Another thing that someone said to me, because I saw it in my Facebook delivery group, someone saying about that the on Uber, you have to enter the days of birth. They recently changed, maybe a month or two ago, that you enter the days of birth, the customer enters it when they order. Then if, if that date of birth isn't actually what they put, then it will say that, it's not right and you had three attempts to do it and then before if you had the three attempts wrong it would just clear it and you could carry on now if those three attempts are wrong you can't give the customer the order and you have to take it back to the shop or wherever it's come from which is pretty crazy that they could be over 18 but i guess they've entered it wrong so yeah i'm not sure about that i guess it stops a rider stealing an order but you could have like for some reason if they accidentally put the wrong year or something and they're not going to know that then you have to take the order back i hope i don't get in that situation but i know other people have already and the next thing just eat tips are now live so you can now be tipped on just eat which is great it's only taken however many years but you can now receive apps on Just Eat. And also someone posted in my group about to do with at the minute sometimes you can get like in Worthing, where I am, says plus 50p per order on a shift sometimes. 
But someone put a screenshot of their area, they're introducing like plus 15% pay on Jesse per order. They, they had that come up rather than the 50p, which is that a good thing? I'm not sure. I guess it depends. No, potentially that could be paying us less. Say you had a three pound order, then that's only what 45p extra. So, hmm. Is there a way to, I mean, overall, would that work out as more money? I suppose it would, but I haven't had it come up in my area yet. Oh, and one last thing. It also came up on my Uber that I've completed 2,500 deliveries with Uber. Something I just wanted to talk to you about quickly is if you turn up to a restaurant and say it's shut on delivery or they say, oh, it's gonna be an hour wait or like imagine that was a situation, something like that and you have to get rid of the order. There is actually a form, which I will link down below, that you can go onto for delivery. this is, and you can fill in a fee query form. So enter the details, screenshot it when at the times so you keep the order number and then you can put in the order number, what's happened, and then in theory, they will send you some money for your time having to like drive around for no reason and you can't actually do the order. I have done it a few times in the past, but in case you don't know, because I assume probably quite a lot of drivers won't know about that. So just take a screenshot of the time and then you can fill in that form after, which I have linked down below so you can find it easily. Now let's talk about a beginner's guide to delivering because a lot of people ask me that are new to delivering or interested in it about many things. I'm going to go through a few basic parts of it to help you out. So how do you sign up? That is a common question. I will pop all the links in the description of how to sign up, but you can also just Google like delivery rider sign up or those for any apps. When you sign up, you'll need to put in like your full name, your date of birth, your address, you'll probably need your passport, driving license, you'll need delivery insurance, a DBS check. It will talk you through like all of this, but you'll need all this information to make sure that you are legal to work in the UK and you have delivery insurance if you're in a car, this is, or on a bike. It's slightly different if you're on like a normal bike or electric bike. I think you have to take a picture of it. Um, and you need your delivery bag, which it'll tell you how to do that as well. I don't know if it's changed or not. Delivery used to be free for delivery bags. It might have changed. I went through a stage of paying for it, but I don't know anymore. Just see if it's still the same as $5.99, you get a bag and a coat. And Uber's a lot more expensive. I only have one, which I don't actually use, um, <laughs> because they did like a free Uber bag one time. So just keep an eye on your emails as well. But you will need a delivery bag. You don't have to use one of the companies. You could buy one from Amazon, but or wherever. But make sure it is a good thermal bag and yeah, you, you wanna keep the customer's food cold or hot. So make sure you have a good thermal bag. When starting delivering, I would suggest probably starting on one delivery app. I worked for Deliveroo for maybe a year straight just for Deliveroo, just to get used to the app and get your way around with delivering. So I'd probably suggest doing that. I mean, you don't have to. Um, it's best to have as many apps as you can really for money wise and stuff. Don't multi app. You can't say you pick up an Uber Eats order, you can't pick up a delivery order at the same time. You have to just work at one app at, at a time. Some realities of being self-employed slash being a driver is, as I've spoken about, you are self-employed. So you have to do your own self-assessment tax return. You need to pay your own tax and national insurance every year and you don't wanna miss the payments. Since January this year, the companies now tell HMRC how much you've earned, which wasn't like that in the past and a lot of people have avoided paying their taxes, but this won't be an option now. I've always paid my taxes as most people, well, a lot of people have, but now you will be caught out. So make sure you pay that and yeah, just so you know that you are self-employed and this has to be done. You also, if you're on a car or a bike um, on a scooter, you have to pay for delivery insurance. So this is hire and reward insurance that you need. So I do have a dedicated video on my channel. It's one of my top videos about delivery insurance. 
I'm personally with Admiral. I pay monthly along with my comprehensive insurance. It's all as one. If you're part-time, I would more than likely suggest Zigo where you can pay hourly pay as you go. So it will only charge you whilst you're working. If you're not on an order, it doesn't charge you as part of your hour and it's linked to your apps so that it only charges you when you're working. And if you're part-time, that's probably your best option and the only app I believe or the only company I believe that you can do pay as you go but it is worth checking different companies to see in case if any other are cheaper but you do have to have the insurance just make sure when you are delivering that you do save for your tax and national insurance um is like that I guess it's one of the positives but negatives of being self-employed that you do need to keep that money to the side you can claim for several stuff like the miles you do so you can either claim for the miles you do or your petrol i personally do the miles so i take a picture at the start and end of each delivery day and then i'll know the miles i do so you can take off for your expensive 45p per mile up to 10,000 miles and then after that is 25p per mile so you can claim quite a lot in your miles that you're not paying tax on which is great you can also have other expenses such as your phone bill um, a percentage of that um you can't claim for so say you're doing your mild you can't then also claim for like the repairs on your car this is all included under your miles you can also claim for food and drink you have whilst delivering i should write more of those down i don't actually write any of them down but if you're more organized than me then um keep note of that as well so the current tax year at the minute is from april 2023 to april 2024 so if you're doing any delivering now this is the current tax year which ends in april and then your first payment won't be until july 2024 then january 2025 and then that continues um on a continuous basis some hints and tips i have for you as a driver is you'll get to know your area as a driver so you'll learn where to pick up from what what orders to reject where you can park like you'll learn it as you go along pretty much don't feel like you have to accept everything on your delivery app so if an order comes up if you don't think it's worth it or for some reason or you can't park or so on don't feel like you have to accept it you can accept it so i've spoken about this in previous episodes Deliveroo and Uber Eats reject as many as you want and they say it doesn't affect you you'll still get as many orders come in even if you keep rejecting orders so don't worry about it Justy is the only one that does have an acceptance rate so this is based on your last 10 orders so if I reject two orders out the last 10 my acceptance rate will be 80% now the lower it gets the less likely you are to get an order but still like if you can't do it or you don't want to do it don't feel like you have to even because of that acceptance rate just bear in mind you may be less likely to be given orders now this one might be a bit controversial i'd say is and i guess to do with the strikes a lot of riders will not take orders that are say under five pounds so the strike actually yesterday and recently is drivers want to be paid five pound minimum and then two pound extra per mile which i think is a bit crazy i mean it would be very cool if that was a thing but i'm not sure it's going to be but anyway i personally do the orders that are lower paying so like the three pound jobs if it is an order that say a grocery pickup that i know is going to be ready i'm right by it it's going to be ready and it's not being dropped off far and it's going to take me five ten minutes then i'm going to do it because i think it's worth it and if i keep doing those they do add up so it's up to you if you want to do them but personally i do obviously if some of them aren't worth it then i don't but then you could also say that for high paying orders say you get like one that's paying eight pounds but it's going 13 miles even though the pay is high you're not going to do that because well that would be a bit crazy too i like to do a pound per mile at the worst case but hopefully better than that now moving on to some facts of delivering which i am going to read from my laptop so i've researched a few different facts which i found interesting and i will leave the links down below in case you want to read in more detail but i'm going to read it from there so that i do not mess them up so the i've got statistics for the uk and statistics for worldwide to do with the food delivery market 
So, the projected revenue in the online food delivery market in the UK is expected to reach 44.07 billion euros in 2024. It's crazy, like, the money is insane. The market is projected to experience an annual growth rate, this is from 2024 to 2028, of 8.56%, resulting in a projected market volume of 61.21 billion euros by 2028. Matt. In the grocery delivery market, there is an expected revenue growth of 16.8% in 2025. So what does that tell us? The grocery market is definitely increasing, which is great and what I love delivering, (laughs) but overall everything is still growing. So it's definitely a market to work in and there's no signs of it decreasing at all, which I think is correct because with everything going up in price, cost of living and so on, everyone still buys food. Like people may cut down on other things such as say clothes, but food I think is always going to be there even as takeaways. So then here's some statistics, like the same statistics, but for worldwide for the food delivery market. The revenue in the online food delivery market is forecasted to reach $1.22 trillion in 2024 is expected to exhibit a compound annual growth 2024 to 2028 of 10.06% resulting in a projected market volume of 1.79 trillion dollars by 2028. My brain can't comprehend like this amount of money is insane. In the grocery delivery market a revenue growth of 20.3% is anticipated by 2025. The market value is projected to be 0.79 trillion dollars in 2024 crazy money and an increase worldwide not just in the uk now i'm going to answer some of your questions that you have asked me either on youtube or my facebook delivery group if you're still here please hit that subscribe button as well and hit the like button and yeah drop a comment because it helps boost my video and is very much appreciated so to answer some of your questions the first one is what was the savings for the year on the bike? Now I've tried to work out a few little statistics here of what it could have possibly saved, but so just in case you don't know, I stopped on the bike mainly because of the weather and I wasn't wanting to work long hours like I do in the car, which is a shame, but I am considering maybe in the summer making one of my accounts a bike again, but we shall see. But statistically, I've worked out my insurance currently based on five days a week, even though I pay monthly, works out as £5.54 a day. So you'd be saving that whilst on a bike. Um, Not paying for fuel, say an average of 100 miles, which currently costs about £20 um, a day. So you're saving that. And then you don't have wear and tear on your car, which I don't know that as a statistic. So you're saving some money but also you are paid slightly less on a bike. Uber definitely favours a car and I wasn't really getting work on the bike. So maybe in the right area is good. Like say when I've done a video in Nottingham where the town centre is only bikes, like you can't drive there. That's probably a good thing. So I guess it depends on the area or London maybe, certain areas. So it's up to you what you want to do. <laughs> but personally, I prefer it in the car. What is Belivery and how do I apply? So Belivery is an app that I've worked for for years now. And it is a app where you can order groceries to your house. They deliver pretty much anywhere in the UK, even rural areas. A lot of my deliveries are to areas where they can't get, say, delivery, Uber Eats, Just Eat and all that. And they can order on Belivery. So um if you want to order also five pound off your first order use code atlanta5 f-i-v-e where you can get five pound off so that's really cool and helps support me as well but for myself as a driver the link is down below to join as a rider but basically it will come through on my phone with an order it will tell me how far away it is and the pay and then I can go to any shop that I want to and buy the items. I pay for it out of my own money, but I get it back the same day or the next day, and then I'm also paid however much it is on top of it as well. At the shop, when you buy the items, you take a photo of the receipt, and then you keep that yourself, drop off the items, the customer gives you a pin number, and then that is all. If on every order, unless it's a scheduled order, which most of them aren't, you can either, if you're like quick enough you can either get a pound extra boost or a 50p extra boost 
someone asked me, do you see how much you've earned as the day goes on because they're interested and want to see how much they've earned because they can only earn up to a certain amount, which is fair enough. And all the apps do show you as you go along how much you have earned, so that won't be a problem at all. Justy and Uber, it shows you right at the top and then delivery, you just click into like your side option and it will say earnings and it will show you for the day or you can see the week. It's all very interactive and very good and you can see everything. And then the last question is, do you ever set a target for money that you want to earn in a day? And yes, most definitely. Now, more recently, I have stopped a side income of mine that I had and this YouTube and social media and delivering is my only work, which is pretty crazy now. Like, it's a big step. Um, So my aim now for each week is £600 delivering. So... I'm trying to do that in four days, so £150 a day as a goal. Yesterday being Valentine's and the strikes, I did 200 The day before, I did only actually do like £60. So yes, I do have a target and I do think it's very good to have a target as well because when I checked last night, I didn't check my earnings and then I was on, I think, 188 And I was like, okay, let's push that last £12 and get to 200 Otherwise, I could have just stopped there and then. So it's definitely good to have a target. Let me know if you have targets down below as well, but I always try to have one in mind. Even if it's a small amount of go out for an evening, I want to do 50 pounds, do the 50 pounds, go home, then that's fine, but it motivates you and pushes you to do that target. And that is the end of episode six of Drive and Deliver with me, Atlanta Delivers. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. Please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and become a member down below. That would be absolutely amazing. And I will see you Sunday at 10am with a delivery video. Bye!